Hello, everybody, and welcome to Taking Control, the ADHD podcast on True Story FM. I'm Pete Wright, and I am here with Nikki Kinzer. Look, it's Nikki Kinzer. Well, hello, everyone. Hello, Pete Wright. You're How looking, are you? You're looking right at me. I am. Through the computer. Right at you. Yes. Ugh, you have a new camera so good. set up. Well, I do. Yeah. I do. I got this new camera set up, and now I have it on a little tripod. I don't know if this is going to work. <laughs> it's a pain <laughs> in the butt. Like, I'm all about having good angles, but come on. <laughs> Every time? <laughs> Every time. Pain in, the, oh. pain in the keister. Wow. Uh, we are continuing our conversation today about uh, ADHD strategies that work uh, most of the time. Yeah. Most, most of the time. Of the time. They, yeah, most of the time they work. Uh, and today we are talking about, oh, geez, we're talking about focus. We're talking about alarm tricks. Uh, we've got so many things, so many submissions from our fantastic listeners came in uh, on this subject uh, mm-hmm. that we've split it up into many parts. So this is part two. Yes, we actually have a part three. It's even more fantastic. They just keep building on one <laughs> another. Can't wait to get started. Uh, before we do that, head over to uh, TakeControlADHD.com. You can get to know us a little bit better. You can listen to the show right there on the website or uh, add your email address. There's a little form. There's a button. You can subscribe to the newsletter and we'll send you an email each time a new episode is released. And oh my gosh, uh, c- confession time. Uh, I'm I'm working on it. This new tier for the Patreon group. It was supposed to be released when we hit 200 patrons. And you know, we hovered at like 195 for so long mm-hmm. that I thought, oh, clearly I've got time. And now we've blown past 200 and now I'm not ready. So I'm, I'm there. I'm very, very <laughs> close. I'm very close. <laughs> we'll have this new thing out. And then we can start talking about uh, a new uh, members only podcast. I'm just so excited about it. You want to learn what I'm talking about? Head over to patreon.com slash the ADHD podcast. And uh, you'll see it. it is. This is where the community goes to support this podcast. Patreon helps us become a listener supported podcast uh, for everybody who's decided to uh, support us and our work here uh, with a few bucks a month. Uh, you know, that goes to building and creating new things for this show, like our upcoming new tiers and projects. And so uh, we're very excited to do it. Thank you so much for everyone who has decided that this is important enough to them and to their daily commute or their daily run uh, to, to keep this podcast growing and thriving. Uh, we couldn't do it without you. It, it it's uh, be a totally different uh, barren uh, hellscape of uh, nothingness sadness. without you. <laughs> Real it's sadness. It'd be sadness. It would be deep, <laughs> deep sadness without you. So thank you, everybody. Uh, you also get access to Discord. Uh, our Discord server is public and open. We have a couple of public channels, but the real secret sauce is when you become a patron. Uh, it unlocks a whole bunch of other channels where uh, lots of great conversations going on, support, accountability, all that kind of good stuff. Patreon.com slash the ADHD podcast. Thank you so much for your support. Now, Nikki, one, study hall. Study hall. Going strong. It's going strong. We had a full house last week, which was very exciting, which really isn't a full house because you can fill a lot in Zoom. (laughs) Yeah, I mean, how many (laughs) many screens? (laughs) Yes, you really can. (laughs) But it was exciting to see all these people working hard. And uh, yes, so I just want to remind people we have study hall on Thursday afternoons. Um, from 1 to 5 Pacific or 4 to 8 p.m. Eastern. And uh, for $10 a session, you can sign up and pay as you go. Um, also, though, if you're a Supreme member of Patreon, you get the study hall for free. Pretty good deal. Can't beat that yeah. with a stick. Yeah, I'll absolutely. Tell and then GPS. GPS is coming up. That is coming up soon. So um, that's exciting. That is my guided planning session workshop. And we meet on Mondays and and Thursdays and we plan for the week and we plan for the end of the week and we plan for the weekend. And uh, we do a lot of planning, Pete, a lot of planning. So much planning. (laughs) Oh my goodness. There's so much. But as we learn to plan, we also learn how to adjust and be kind to ourselves and maybe lower our expectations a little bit of what we can get done in a day, in a week. So there's a lot of learning going on with that planning too. So if you are in a point or at a point where you would like a little bit of guidance uh, around your planning, weekly planning, I suggest you check out GPS. And if you have a question, send it to me and I'll answer it. I do that sometimes. Excellent. Yeah. Excellent. (laughs) Uh, and now, speaking of planning, let's talk about unique ADHD strategies that uh, work most of the time. Uh, 
So I have two I'm adding because these came after the fact and they really, okay. do they have anything to do with focus? Kind of, I guess, maybe. Uh, yeah, okay. Yeah. So the these two ideas actually came from the same person. So she's brilliant. Let's just say that. Okay. <laughs> uh, so she was avoiding some um, tasks and, uh, you know, that's strange that anybody would avoid anything, right? Especially tasks and chores yeah. or whatever. Yeah, I have no uh, idea what that know. looks like. Uh, but anyway, she was avoiding some stuff and she has a work journal and she decided to take her journal out and just start free writing about what she felt about this task. And, you know, what what she was feeling, why she was feeling that way, what it was, what she had to do. And she said it was so therapeutic that by the time I was done, I was ready to go do the task. Like I was ready to just say, I'm doing it. Yeah. So because you you write the fear out of it. Right. You right. right you write the fear out of it. Yeah. yeah. So I just thought that was a great idea. And I wanted to pass that on. Uh, That's a great idea. Yeah. yeah. And then the other idea that she had, and I'm sure people probably have heard this before, but you know, whenever you hear something, um, it always seems like it's the first time you hear it sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, wow, that's brilliant. Uh, yeah. But what she does is she has notes. I mean, you know, she has a notebook for notes when she's in meetings, right? Because it's not comfortable mm-hmm. for her to be doing that on the computer. So she has a little notebook and she's in a meeting and she's writing notes. And then she takes those little tiny um, uh, oh, sticky notes, you know, that look like little flags. And so mm-hmm. anytime there is a action, like a, a thing that she has to do in the meeting, she puts that little tag there. So then when she goes back to put those tasks into her task management system, when she uses Trello, she's able to quickly look at what she has to do from those meetings w- w- without having to read the whole thing over again. Yeah, yeah. I thought totally. that was good. And- what I really like about that, because I'm usually like when I take notes in a like a bullet or not a bullet journal in a uh, field notes or something, mm-hmm. then I usually go back to my computer and any task items that come out of it, I, you know, add to to do list or put in my calendar, et cetera. Yeah. But uh, what I like about this is that, you know, what if I what if I don't? Right. What if I don't go process those notes at the end of the day? Like I know that I normally do. That's part of my problem. What if yeah. I get distracted by something else and I don't do it? What I love about this is I can at a glance. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Look at the the actual notebook and see the stickies coming out. That'll remind right. me that's unprocessed. And I think what I would what I would do is once I process and put it in To Doist or or my calendar, I would take the sticky yep. out to to note. Okay, this is processed. Done. I I I know where it is. That's a great idea. Yeah. It, there is a uh, there's something that gets me thinking about one of my my favorite um, uh, note like uh, for iPad users. My favorite uh, uh, iOS and macOS like handwritten note app is called Notability. And Notability just released, for all my griping about Bullet Journal, Notability just released a Bullet Journal template and sticker pack. And I'm not kidding you, they include like digital washi tape and digital stickers that you can put in (laughs) your digital notebook for bullet journaling. And uh, so you can design all your pages just like you can on a regular thing. It's like a, it's an add-on for Notability. They sell these packs of stickers and things. So this one's like $3.99 and it gets, it allows you to build your own digital bullet journal like by hand, but all the stickers give you like straight lines and headings in, in beautiful cursive that looks like... You can pretend you wrote it. That's awesome. Uh, and, That's a and good actually idea. have great handwriting. It's such a that good idea. A really it's good really, idea. it's a great yeah. idea. So I, I love that they did that and uh, a yeah. nice tool. Uh, All right. Okay. So shall we, let's talk about focus. Let's focus on focus. Yes. So I'm going to do the first one because it's just one little sentence. And then I'm going to make you do this, <laughs> the next one <laughs> because it's like 10 sentences. <laughs> See how this works? <laughs> I do. That's that's fair. <laughs> that's fair. Right. Okay. So focus. I turn off all notifications on my computer, tablet, and phone except text so that I have a fighting chance to get things done. <laughs> I love that. Fighting chance. Yes. It's true. Yeah, you know, I good. took off the notification for my email when we switched to spark. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, it is really interesting when you don't see that something's come in, how you easily forget about email. 
Yeah. And then you, it dawns on me that, huh, I haven't checked my email lately. And then I'll check my email and there's like 10 messages on there. It, it really does do something when you don't see it. It's out of mind. Yeah, it does. It, but I can't tell what you're saying. Is that in a good way? I think it's in a good way because I was always drawn to check it regardless, right? So if something new mm-hmm. came in, I would look at it. So for me, it's good um, yeah. because I'm still looking I, at I, it enough that I'm not missing anything. Right. Yeah. That's the important part. And I think it's, um, oh, geez, it's, uh, I, I also don't do notifications on email. And if I didn't have a, the reminder in my calendar that says like process the day, mm-hmm. you know, check your email in the morning and at night. Um, I would never hear from I you. Would, I would never hear from anybody, <laughs> right? You would never hear from me. Uh, I do, I, I do. There's so much of my day though, that is spent in email, mm-hmm. um, you know, communicating with different clients and transitioning contacts and things like that, that I find during the day, I don't need the notification flag up yeah. on my inbox because I'm already there. Right. And um, and and so that that's why it's really after hours when I deeply don't want to be looking at email mm-hmm. that not having notifications really is a that's a head clear. Yes, that's a is. really great way to great way to do it. Uh, OK, so I've got one and this is from Ellie. This is the world famous uh, Ellie. And uh, she says, I swear by listening to really energetic music. I have a whole playlist of only rock, dubstep, hip hop, pop, and even hardcore EDM that I use for work and homework. More than 24 hours of music. I put on my nice over-the-ear headphones and turn up the music to boost dopamine. Classical tends to just make me too relaxed to focus. If I'm doing something writing composition intensive, then I need music with fewer lyrics. But if I'm doing any sort of any other sort of work, then it doesn't matter. It works best if, the mu- if it's music I'm familiar with, though. So I prefer a curated playlist to a radio station. Singing along and dance parties generate even more dopamine. I like I can just totally picture oh, a I homework totally dance can. party yeah. like alone. Uh-huh. Okay, I also use the same playlist to help me stay focused while cleaning or driving. Fantastic. Uh and y- y- you know, I'm sure Ellie that you've done this before. I don't know why I'm asking, but my memory is not great. I hope you have shared that in the music channel in Discord. Mm. Uh so that other people can subscribe to your curated EDM uh, trance uh, dubstep uh, hardcore rock playlist absolutely amazing cool. i still use brain fm do you remember brain uh-huh. fm yes. did you ever try it yeah well i, have I still noise. have brain fm on my phone that's what i have noise well but that's brain different. fm is yeah yeah because brain fm has like it it actually has that i don't know if it works i don't know if it's hocus pocus voodoo or or what but it has this vibration in the background that supposedly uh, uh, attenuates your focus like it, oh. it or relaxation or it's like reprogramming and deprogramming your brain and um i just in the spirit of the glorious placebo i have conditioned myself to believe that it's working when it's working and i hope it's actually working but i really <laughs> believe that it's working <laughs> and so matters, it's fine Pete. that's all that matters it's really <laughs> Really all it cares. So Brain FM is it's great. And you know, you set it and just say, hey, play this for two hours. And then when it's two hours is up, it's over. And I feel like I've lost time. Mm-hmm. I feel like I've just gotten two hours of amazing stuff done. And and um um uh, so it's 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 great. Um Brain FM. Yeah. Or Ellie's playlist. One or the other. Yeah. That's cool. that's Either or. Either or. All right, what's next? Okay, if I'm having a really great focus day, especially after a period of low focus, I try to make an entry into this informal log I keep of stuff that sometimes works. Oh my gosh, it's kind of like our ADHD strategies that sometimes work. (laughs) I love that. I do too. That's really cool. So I'll write down what sort of music I was listening to, what I ate, whether I exercised, what fidget I used, caffeine intake. Once you have enough entries, you can even start to see trends. I learned that making sure I drink enough water is a huge focus booster. I love this tip. I love it. I do too. It feels like, is this the first time that you've read it? (laughs) Yes. It is because I'm like blown away. And, you know, I think it's from a coach's perspective why I love this so much because this person, um, whoever you are, is really um, 
being reflective, right? So they're really looking in yeah. what what works for me. And I'm documenting it because I know I'm probably not going to remember. And because of the kind of all or nothing mentality that sometimes ADHD can fall into, if you're having a, a, a low focus, it'd be really easy to just sort of stay there with, you know, with, with not getting out of it. But he's got this resource or she has this like proven, you know, data of when I drink more water, I'm going to have more focus. And I, I just love that he's, that I don't know who it is. So I love that they, 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 that they (laughs) are, um, documenting it. I love that they're looking at it with, it seems to me like a curiosity type of mindset, not judgmental. And they're using that information and, you know, they're learning what works for them. And I just, I love it. I love that. I do too. I do too. I think it's really fantastic. And, and, um, uh, it's one of the reasons I love like the workout apps, right. That track my activity without me actually Mm -hmm. having to to do the data entry myself because I just look at it and I get focused by trends. Yeah. And uh, I think there's a lot of value to that. This is a great, great tip. Mm-hmm. Uh, Andre uh, writes in Discord, audio is the only thing that works consistently. To get simple, practical stuff done, a podcast or audiobook, preferably fiction or history, but not if the task requires some mental focus or I'll end up... M- mounting the mirror not so straight. (laughs) Yeah, that happened. To focus on something important for work, production music from Thomas Bergerson, audio machine, immediate music, etc. And for all this, my AirPods Pro have been a godsend. I just have to remember to take them out when I'm done so my wife doesn't feel like I'm ignoring her. I have to give another shout out to the kitchen wall screen running DAC board. It has really helped me to keep on top of dates, appointments, simple things like remembering to change my contacts when our trash gets picked up. Well, when our trash gets picked up, et cetera. <laughs> uh, you don't change your contacts when your trash gets picked up, et cetera. Uh, so there, there's uh, there's a lot to unpack in here. Mm-hmm. Uh, first, I, I totally get that, you know, having something going on in the background, I listen, I just put on a radio station, like a, a NPR stream or something like that. If it's, if it's just like busy work that I don't have to think about, if I'm, you know, not actually writing something. Uh, I, I do love busting through audiobooks. Uh, I get through a ton of audiobooks on Libby uh, as a result of that. And then they're not audiobooks that I really, you know, want to read hard. Uh, often I end up with an audiobook that I'll listen to, and I know I'm missing some of it because I'm actually focusing, but I need someone talking to me in the background yes. that I can ignore. Like, that's a whole different kind of vibe. Um, and uh, so that's that's that. Uh, but I... I do think that there is something to this, uh, and he didn't say it, but the AirPods Pro and having really good noise canceling um, to silence out the world and allow whatever you select to be the thing that you're listening to, that noise cancellation is incredible on the AirPods Pro and AirPods Max. And so, um, you know, that that is a... So I wanna, that is a crazy thing. I want to clarify so. something. So the AirPods are like the same ones I have, right? That just the little tiny ones, or are these different? Well, there are there are three models of AirPods right now. There's the the little tiny ones that have the little stem, and mm-hmm. you tap them to you know pause music, etc. Right? You you have those? Yeah. The tapping ones. Yeah. Okay. The second model up are the AirPods Pro, and they actually have a little rubber gasket on the end of them, and they go into your ear, and you kind of twist them, and they seal in, and instead of tapping them, you squeeze them. Oh, I see. And those are the ones that have noise canceling on. Oh, okay. And so you can turn on noise canceling, and I'm telling you, it's like, it's just the sound disappears. Mm Mm-hmm. Uh, in the world around you. So you're just listening and, and you don't even hear that kind of white noisy mm-hmm. thing in my experience. I mean, it's just really good. And then you squeeze them again and it actually turns on what's called transparency mode, which magnifies the sound in the world outside. So you can have conversations with people and hear them very, very clearly without having to take your AirPods out of your head right. if you just need a, a break or if you're on a run or something, you want to hear traffic. Yeah, It's a great way to kind of merge stuff. The Third are the AirPods Max, which are the over-the-ear oh, okay. headphones that have even better noise cancellation, but they're they're very large and and pretty expensive, yeah. and and so they're like real audiophile stuff. Mm-hmm. So uh, those are the three models. The ones with the with the noise cancellation are are stunning. Mm-hmm. Um, the DAC board. If you missed it when he built this thing, Andre did a bit of a a um, uh, like a, a construction 
<laughs> thing. Uh, the Dakboard is, it's like an open source uh, D-A-K-B-O-A-R-D Dakboard. And he put it, he has it running on a little, I think it's an Arduino uh, on the back end. It's just a little uh, sort of programmable computer. Um, and it's on a big TV. And he documented it and posted pictures mm-hmm. in Pretty amazing. Uh, disc- Discord. It was fantastic. And it becomes a, a dashboard mm-hmm. that's just hanging in their kitchen. It's like the equivalent of a whiteboard, but it's digital. And uh, you can interact with it with all of his devices and things like that. And it's just crazy good. Uh, it's, it, you know, it's a little bit of an alpha tool if you've mm-hmm. never built your own thing like this, but it is a, um, it's a very cool uh, process. I could never, I tried to get my family in and around it, but they love whiteboarding so much. Mm-hmm. They threatened to actually, uh, you know, put dry erase all over whatever screen <laughs> oh, I hang geez. in the kitchen. <laughs> and I thought, I don't want to waste no, gear like that. No, so, that's not worth uh, it. Dakboard is worth checking out if you're, uh, if you're a gadget freak. Awesome. Yeah. All right. Nerdish mom. This is who this is from. Excellent. Yes. I turn right. off almost all notifications except texts. That's weird. That's what the other person did too. She did all of uh, uh, turn off yeah. all, tablet and phone except texts. And then she's yeah. saying, I turn off almost all notifications except texts. That's interesting. <laughs> I wonder why. <laughs> I wonder. So That's she, funny. Yeah. She says, I don't get a lot. So it's not much of a distraction. So she actually has an explanation of why. But that's interesting. Yeah. Um, and only the most important reminders. Uh, an example, uh, doctor's appointments and things. Make the cut because otherwise I stop seeing them all together. Oh yeah, she's onto something there. Mm-hmm. Setting reminders on my Echo does seem to work better than using phone notifications. I don't always do what Alexa says, but at least she always gets my attention. So that's yeah. great. And you know, I think when we'll talk about alarms, I don't know if um, this gets brought up or not, but... I I really like how she's saying, uh, you know, they have to make a cut, right? So they have to yeah. really mean something um, and really be s- s- a, a reminder to do something that you're really going to do, you know, at mm-hmm. that time. So I, I like that. That's great. I do, too. I think that's great. Uh, I, I think the same thing goes to my trick of removing all of the apps mm-hmm. off your home screen on your phone and then, you know, only using only moving them back once they make the cut. Right. Uh, that's that's pretty powerful, too. Uh, the other thing that I've been playing a lot with, and if you haven't explored this, I think it's worth it. Android users, I think, have been able to do this for a long time, but iOS users is pretty recent, is widgets. Oh. Uh, putting widgets on your home screen. Um, for example, I like there are apps that I have on my phone that I don't actually need to open to get their data anymore. I have a little block on my home screen that says this is your next appointment. I don't need to open my calendar to see this thing on my screen permanently that says here's your next mm-hmm. meeting. So I can just glance at it without being sucked into the act of opening apps and and potentially getting distracted. Mm-hmm. And that has become pretty powerful and lots and lots of apps have been updated um, to include new widget views. Android users, I'm really curious. I feel like we need a share your home screen um, like project for uh Discord, where we can just see how we're using home screens and data management. That would be really fun. Mm-hmm. Um, so, uh, yeah. There you go. Intern, make that. Oh, he's gone. He went to eat. Okay. <laughs> uh, anyway. All right. Last one is yours. Okay. So there's a ton of lo-fi playlists. Here we go. Playlists on Spotify, ranging from spooky to spring to sci-fi, and they're all really great for studying. Sometimes it's nice to assign them to tasks. I'm an anthropology major and do a lot of reading, and that's hard for me, but I find a playlist that fits the mood or the subject I'm reading, and it makes it fun. I like Lovely. it. I wonder what spooky Lovely. is. All I, 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 know. I imagine... It's just, it's just people screaming. Yeah, or just like <laughs> little ghosts, like, Ooh, yeah, yeah. You know, going in the air. Awesome. Yeah. All right, we're moving uh, on. Next, yeah, next area is alarm tricks. So many great alarm tricks. Okay. Uh, one of the most annoying but helpful tools I use is the app Freaky Alarm. I use it for wake up and to force me to go to bed. It plays incredibly annoying noises until you solve a series of puzzles. And I set it up so that, oh my God. Oh, yeah. I did not know about that. Yes. I I, think you recommended it some other. We put it in a show note at some point. And I only looked at it a little bit 
Uh, I did not know about the puzzles. Yes, okay, I, I have a client this. that does that. That's how she gets up, and and that's the phone fantastic. is in the bathroom, so she has to go and sub the, like she has to solve the puzzle. She connected it somehow to the sink. I don't know what she did, but it's amazing. Yes, that's it. Yeah. So okay, you have to solve a series of puzzles, and then I set it up that I have to scan a barcode as the final step <laughs> for each. So at night, to make sure I go to bed, it goes off and tells me to get ready for bed and won't stop until I interrupt whatever I'm doing, solve the puzzles and scan the barcode of a book that stays in my bedroom. Mm -hmm. And then boom, I'm in my room. Morning is the same, but I have to finish with scanning something from the kitchen and boom, I'm out of bed. That is mind-blowingly good. I know, right? Both <laughs> the way she's using the tool and that the tool exists, that is fantastic. Yes. Yes, I agree. So, yeah, pretty cool. So, check out Freaky, Freaky Alarm. Alarm. Mm -hmm. That is so great. Right? Oh, my gosh. Yeah. All right. New technology stuff for Pete. Yeah. <laughs> All right. I'm on it. So, I set alarms for every load of laundry so I don't forget about it for two days and actually change the laundry over. Oh, my gosh. I'm so guilty yeah. of this. So, okay. Set alarms for every load of laundry so I don't forget about it. All right. I'm going to do that. I like it. Yeah. Yeah, I, I that's a that's an Apple Watch thing I've moved to is just having it on a complication on my watch face. So I just tap it and it automatically starts, you know, I can actually just start the alarm um, very, very quickly. And so every time I put it in and I tap it and start like the, you know, 60 minute and move on. Mm -hmm. It's great. One other way I use alarms is that when I'm in a meeting with friends or anyone, or I'm pausing for some fun time with the kids before getting back to work, I set an alarm and tell them that I want to be fully present and not worry about the time while we hang out. So I'm going to set an alarm that will be a reminder five minutes before we need to wrap up. No one ever minds, and I can be a better friend, listener, and parent. Oh, I love that, that's too. So that's nice. a great yeah. Great strategy. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Okay, so this last strategy is all about the Apple Watch. Hey, I know about that. Uh huh. And uh, Danny is saying that they will be they would be lost without it, right? So, yeah. Um, I use it for timers when I make dinners or run on my lunch break. Alarms to wake up quietly so the baby or dogs don't wake up, and many, many reminders. I'll make a reminder list when I grocery shop or things to do or look up at the end of the day. This keeps me from going on a Google binge during the workday. All you need to do is speak to the watch and she adds to whichever list you want. I also know that the list will always be accessible no matter what store or place I end up. Good for a busy mama. Mm -hmm. When I get a text or call, I can view on my watch to see if it really needs my attention now or can wait. As you know, once you open your phone, who knows? When you You'll get out. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> Say it's from daycare. I know to answer. And as simple as it sounds, having the time always by me with a watch keeps me on track. Most days. Most days. Yeah. That's really important. And I think that's uh, that's just another reminder to make sure that you use your uh, use an analog watch face on your digital watch. It first, it looks classier, even though it's it may seem a bit anachronistic. Uh, but I'll tell you, having the hands sweeping around yeah. on your wrist is is a reminder of time passing. One thing I've never checked out is if the Time Timer app has a watch face. That would be really cool if I could just make my watch face the, the time, time timer. timer. <laughs> that that's what I what I really want. Yeah. Um, so, uh, which is another good tool, by the way, for time tracking and alarms. Don't forget, if you haven't tried out time timer, I, time timer, I think we've talked about it a lot, but get a time timer. Make it happen. We have talked about that. But you know something we haven't talked about that maybe will be a technology um, show for when Pete has his yes. private little podcast in Patreon. Um, Pete's private podcast. Yes. <laughs> but I'm curious because I have an Apple Watch, but I know I don't use it to the, um, I don't use it like I should use it. And so I'd be really curious to have you like do a shop workshop where you can just like these are the ins and outs and the things that you can do and because i really think i'm missing a lot yeah 
Yeah, I, I, I can relate to that. I mean, I, I think it's uh, uh, just keeping track of how, uh, you know, what developers are doing to push the mm-hmm. Apple Watch forward mm-hmm. is not something that a lot of people do day to day. And um, and recognizing how many of your apps on your phone have actually already installed themselves on your watch right. and give you features on your wrist that you may not know how great they are, what yeah. you're missing out of in terms of, you know, productivity and managing your day and, and, and I, that kind of stuff. So that'd be really fun. It would be. And I am seeing more clients who are, are investing in the Apple Watch because they see yeah. the value in it. And yeah. um, so I think that that, yeah. Well, and what's really cool, speaking of, you know, we talk about sharing your um, sharing your home screen, you can also share watch faces. Oh. So I could configure my watch face for my, you know, time management productivity, and you can have multiple watch faces. So during the day, I have, you know, the watch face with all the different complications and data mm-hmm. bits on them that I can use, but I can swipe over from left to right for my evening watch face, which removes all of those things, right? Oh, so I don't see all that crazy data. Um, and I can share those watch faces such that like you could get the watch face, tap it, install it on your phone. And it just, you know, if you don't have the apps that I use, mm-hmm. it just leaves a little kind of blank there. You can download those apps. Uh, but it, it's just a great way to just share, hey, this is um, this is how I manage my day. This is this is how I structure my time. <laughs> I just had this crazy idea. If we looked at what apps are on like my phone and what apps are on your phone, <laughs> Oh my god, that would you be know funny. What? We need that that should be like a bonus workshop where Nikki and Pete talk about their phones. Oh boy. That would be hysterical. That, that would be That would be hysterical. really quite entertaining and I have to say I oh think I would be putting myself in a um position where I would not feel like I'm the smartest person in this conversation at all. <laughs> 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 you you'll have this like no. fancy like app about doing something really great superpower or something and i'm going to have like um you know my games i'm going <laughs> to <laughs> Come on, look, candy, it's candy crush, crush. <laughs> and toy blast and you know those kinds of things yeah Sudoku. oh nikki yeah. we're gonna talk about <laughs> shortcuts we're gonna talk about triggers it's gonna be amazing <sighs> so fun it's gonna be amazing well, i can't wait I do. I have a, a real-time update. Yeah. Uh, Melissa, thank you so much. Time Timer is available for the Apple Watch. Oh, good. Uh, so there you go. Wonderful. Great. Thank you. Um, okay. Anything else we need to cover? We did it. We did it. Thank you, everyone. This is just some great tricks. Yeah, great tricks. Yeah, thank great you tips. so much. Keep keep sharing uh, with each other on Discord. If you're a member over there, we, we, love, uh, we love seeing how you're managing your life uh, with ADHD. And we thank you so much for downloading and listening to this show. Thanks for your time and your attention. And don't forget, if you do have something to contribute to this conversation, head over to the Show Talk channel in the Discord server, and you can join us right there by becoming a supporting member at the deluxe level. On behalf of Nikki Kinzer, I'm Pete Wright. We'll catch you next week right here on Taking Control, the ADHD podcast. 